Hi, this is part two of our DIY at home silicone mold making demo. Today, what we're going to be doing is making a mother mold. That's the mold that's going to hold the rubber mold together when we're done. So the other day we made a silicone mold and if you watch that, you'll remember that we made this seam here. Um, that is the place where we're going to cut this mold. Right now, it would be very difficult to get this pattern out of this mold. So we need to cut a seam so that we can peel it away. That's also going to be the place that we can peel away from the wax that we cast or the plaster that we cast or the resin that we cast into this rubber mold. And something needs to hold that together. Otherwise, we just have this flobbery sock of rubber and nothing um, will, will stay in it. it. It's just too soft. So the mother mold clamps this together and holds it in place so that we can pour things into it. So what I'm going to use, you can just use straight plaster, but it's kind of messy. I don't have that um, at home, but I do have a roll of this plaster bandage mold making material. I've cut it into strips, so you're going to need a scissors to do that. And a bucket for some water so that I can dip those strips in there and start to activate the plaster. Um, I'm making a two part mold. There's going to be one half like this and then the other half over here. I don't want those two halves to stick together. So I got some paste wax and a brush. I'm going to use that to lubricate the seam between the two parts of the mold so that they'll come apart easily when we're done. Got my shop towel to catch any excess water or plaster drips. And I've got this handy silicone mat. Um, people use it for doing resin, making candy stuff at you know home. Um, what's wonderful about it is that most things won't stick to silicone other than silicone. So when I make my plaster mold today, when I'm done, it won't stick to this mat. I can just lift it up, take it off. But I did not use this uh, silicone mat the other day when I made my um, my silicone mold because silicone sticks to silicone. So if I had made my mold directly on top of this, there's a good chance that the two could have stuck together permanently and I would have had to cut them apart and ruin my silicone mat. But I know that silicone, especially the way that we were doing it with that silicone caulking and water and soap, won't stick to hardly anything other than itself. So I can make it directly into this pie tin and not have it stick. In fact, this is a piece of silicone from the other day, um, from the first part of our demo, that was stuck to the side of this thing, and I was just able to pull it right off, like not sticking at all. It shows you how little silicone sticks to most anything else, other than itself. So anyway, that's all the things that we're gonna need for today. Um, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got our plaster strips, we've got a bucket of water, I've got um, scissors and extra gauze just in case I run out. Most importantly, I've got the instructions for my materials. A couple of things about plaster, whether it's um, raw plaster or plaster on a strip like this, the thing to know is that the temperature of the water matters. Also the amount of time that you hold this under the water matters. The warmer the water, well guess what? The faster it sets, the colder the water, the slower it sets. Now, as I'm doing this, my goal is to activate as much of this plaster as possible, push into all the little crevices as possible, and on this seam here, I only want to go halfway around that seam. I don't want to go all the way around the edge. So anywhere where it's like that, I'm going to fold it and I'm going to do the same uh, thing for every single one of these that I get up here. I'm going to part it right along that seam. So just by rubbing it, I can activate a lot of that plaster. I count as I'm holding it underneath there. It says on the instructions, three to five seconds in room temperature water. Counting in my head. Try not to fold it, but you do want to overlap it 
as you're working and I work very similar to when I was making the mold itself. I'm working out in the air bubbles and I'm working from one direction to the other to make sure that I have a good contact with the surface. At this point, really, it's viscosity of the water itself um, that and the plaster starting to do stuff that is uh, uh, keeping this stuck on the surface. And again, I'm splitting this right in half. So I'm looking for three to five seconds under the water and then I'm trying to overlap them as evenly as possible. And what I wanna do is split it right along that parting line. You'll see me do that here in a second. Rubbing it a little bit activates all the plaster. I'm gonna fold it. I don't know if you can, I hope you can see that. Right along that edge, splitting that seam that we made, that little fin, splitting that right in two. And I'm trying to keep this as smooth and controlled as possible. When I get down to this edge, I'm trying to do the same thing. I don't want any air bubbles like that. I want the plaster mold to touch the silicone mold everywhere possible. So the final step here is I've cut some strips thin like this. I'm gonna double them over. And that's what I'm gonna to use to reinforce the edge here. To make a nice, rounded, smooth edge. And that little edge there is where the two halves are gonna join. The angle's a little weird right now. Let me see if I can move it. Yeah, I can move it pretty easy. See, it won't stick to silicone. Um, but that's where the two halves are gonna meet up and join. So I want a nice thick edge there because I don't want it to crack along that edge. So that's the last step for me is uh, you know, cutting some plaster into some, uh, some of the gauze into some thinner strips. I'm gonna double them over like so. And I'm using that to very carefully reinforce that edge. Okay, so we've got the first half completed. It's got a pretty good, you can sort of see the thickness of that edge there. It's got a pretty good edge on it. So now what we're gonna do is get ready for the second half. And the first part of that is to clean up this edge a little bit and then I'm gonna wax it, but I'm just gonna clean it up first. I'm not trying to pull the mold away from the mother mold. I'm not too worried about this plaster stuff. You just clean that off just a little bit, not the biggest deal. I just mainly wanna get a nice clean edge here and any excess plaster that's on that edge, I wanna remove. Now I've waited about 30 minutes. I could wait longer. What I'm noticing with this plaster gauze material is that it's not as robust um, as just regular old plaster. And I don't, I don't know why that is. It just could be the kind that maybe means that I need to do uh, less water. Maybe I need to do, um, maybe I need to clean it off. Um, it's the first time that I've used this particular brand and there's all these different little details to using this stuff. But let's talk about this. So what I've got some paste wax you definitely want ventilation for this stuff, maybe even a, a, a respirator. It's pretty nasty smelling. My goal here is I'm going to wax and fill in all the little crevices. Um, that's going to prevent the plaster from the first layer, second layer from getting in there. And I'm gonna overlap that edge there a little bit as well. So it overlaps there. That's gonna make sure that if any of the plaster wraps around that the second layer won't stick. But any of those little 
undercuts those little those little areas there. I don't want the two plaster molds to lock together. Um, so I'm filling in all those with dot paste wax. So this time, because I uh, saw the issues with the plaster from the first time, I'm gonna remove as much water from it as I can. I think it had too much water. This feels to me like sort of plaster that will need to dry a little longer because it has too much water. So here we go. Still gonna let it soak for three seconds. And then I'm just gonna do one of these numbers here make almost that water go away again starting a little bit off the edge pushing the air out activating as much of that plaster as I can I can already tell this is less saturated by just that one move of running it between my fingers first bring it up over the top um, and then I am going to like that, I'm gonna overlap that edge just a little bit and make sure I push this into all those little crevices. This is gonna make one layer overlap the other, lock it in so that we have a nice registration when we do the final. So there you have it, that's both sides of a plaster, plaster mother mold made using plaster bandage wrap. We'll come back to this when it's cured fully, take it apart, and then talk about cutting the seam in the rubber mold and making waxes, and that's the next part of this. For right now, we're gonna let this cure um, fully at least an hour, probably more than that. Plaster, if you mess with it too early or before it's fully cured, you can definitely um, crack it, damage it. The other thing about plaster that's a little weird is that if you make a mold, you should always store it together because plaster, especially when it's wet, doesn't seem to be moving, but it is very slightly flexible. And this is a weird sort of concept but you can leave, if you make a mold to this side and it's really heavy and I let it sit here, it can literally flatten out by gravity overnight. So I'm always gonna store my molds together. And if I have a mold that is um, thin like this, it, then it's even more important that while it's curing and while it's drying, that I don't store it taken apart. So the first part of this is I'm going to try to get the two halves of my mold apart. Now it should be pretty easy, but I'm just gonna start by using my little tool here, going along the edge and just loosening it a little bit so that any of the plaster that is stuck will unstick. And then I should just be able to pull on these two halves, you can see it's starting to separate. I'm gonna keep working around it so I can see that it's starting to pull apart right there. I'm gonna work from the other side as well. Trying not to. So there we go. You can sort of see how that's happening. And there we go, there's one half very lightweight mother mold. And now we're gonna see if we can get the rubber mold out of the second half, which again, should be pretty easy. I'm gonna start by loosening the edges. Mostly this is a vacuum that's holding this together. So I'm gonna loosen the edges all the way around. I can feel it pulling away. 
Um, and what you can see here, which is really useful, you see the little, that's the residue of the wax. And you see how that edge is uneven? You'll see that when we put these back together, that's gonna help these two lock together and not move around. So now it should just be a matter of a little bit of elbow grease. And there we go. So we have two halves of the mother mold. That wax helped it come off. Um, and then we've got our two parts here that are gonna lock together. And you can see they, they fit nicely together. It's already a shell um, that's gonna hold that together. So this explains a little bit more too why that seam. When I take this guy and I put it in the half that it belongs in, it's coming halfway around that seam. The other half is gonna grab the other half of the seam and pinch it together. And that seam is right where we're gonna cut it, which we're gonna do now. So, really important when you're doing this, we're not just trying to make a simple straight cut through this rubber mold. If I do, the there would be nothing to lock the two halves together. They'll be slippy this way and slippy this way. So actually, what I'm gonna do as I cut this is I'm gonna cut in at an angle, I'm gonna peel it away and then cut in at another angle. I wanna try to make a V shape like this. So one half's a V and the other half's that. So they'd be locked together like that. And so they won't slide apart. Okay, so like I said, instead of cutting straight into it, I'm gonna cut this at an angle. I'm going to do it here so maybe you can see. I'm going to start by cutting not straight in but at an angle like this. You can do this with an exacto. You can do it with a sharp razor blade or a utility knife, whatever the case is. Silicone is not that fun to cut so you just kind of keep at it and it feels kind of like it's tearing. So once I get it cut at that angle, hold on, I'm just gonna do a little bit. It's hard to do, there we go. I clearly need a sharper blade. Hold on. Got a sharp, fresh razor blade here. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in at that angle kind of like almost a 45, okay? And I'm cutting in kind of ragged. And then to finish the cut, so you see that's at a 45 angle, like there. To finish the cut, I'm gonna cut like that. So I'm gonna peel it back and cut the other way. And I'm trying to make it, I'm actually attempting to make it pretty jagged. because I want it to, you can see how that's working there, it's making that V shape. I want it to lock in place all along this mold seam. So especially that second cut, second cut can get kind of, kind of raggedy and it's not only not a problem, it actually is good because it's going to make all these little teeth that want to lock together. And once you're really getting into it, you can really start to engineer that seam to really be jagged and have a lot of teeth to it. So you can see how that's working. That is creating a V-shaped split there, and that's what's gonna hold it together. So we're just gonna do the rest of it. So I'm just proceeding along that line. I cut the top angle first, peel it open, cut the inside angle second, always cutting away from myself and just keep going, but I'm not gonna go all the way around. That's critical. So we're almost done here. You can see how the edge of that 
is very jagged and it makes this V shape. That's gonna keep these two halves from locking together. And I think we're probably ready to unpeel this and like a sock, just pull it off of our pattern. And there you go. There we have it. We have our rubber pattern, our original positive, none the worse for wear, both the clay and this perfectly fine. Um, I'm probably going to put this outside for another day or two because and maybe give it a good cleaning because it has some of that vinegary smell from the silicone. Now let's see how the pattern, how this works. So we've got, we can see that we got a really good capture of that mold, of that pattern. So we got a great surface and you can see how this mold locks together with that jagged seam. So now it's a matter of putting it back in the mother mold, making sure the seam lines up. I don't know if you can see there, but I'm making sure that seam lines up. Put on the other half of the mother mold to pinch it together. Lock it in place. And there you go. You can see that None of that, you can barely see where I cut it, the seam here, um, because it's all locked together. Now the only thing I've got to do, I'm going to get uh, some rubber bands put around this to hold this together so that it won't slip apart, when, and then we can go melt and pour some waxes. So until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.